And our gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter. When Jesus was baptized, the spirit that fills all of earth now fills Christ in a special way. In response, Jesus retires to the wilderness to connect with creation. In Mark's version, the wild animals and the angels join him. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove. Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So I get to be the one to kick off this creation series for you folks. And uh, I know maybe some of you were hoping, uh, those that went to the Lenten series, that it would be another one where the pastors would dress up in character, you know, and do a little, do a, do a voice or something like that, uh, especially because my Creation S- Sunday uh, text is under the theme of Outback, so I could have come, you know, in a good, like, cr- my best Crocodile Dundee attire, you know, with a big hat and a big knife, and uh, really just played up the, uh, the idea of the Australian Outback. And so I guess even I was a little disappointed when I saw that really it wasn't so much about Australia you know, in the, in the readings, um, since I did love that movie so much. But, uh, you know, this is an interesting sort of concept to think about, especially as we're beginning this series on creation. You know, I think next week you'll have Pastor Jordan, who, I don't know if he meant it to be kind of a joke, but Jordan is talking about the river, right? The Jordan River, the Jordan, yeah. I'm sure he'll make a joke out of that. I probably just ruined it for him. I ruined the surprise, so... Uh, I think Pastor Mike is talking about fauna, so different animals, uh, and other people. Are, I know a couple of folks are talking about the forest. I know Pastor Doug is at my church this week talking about the cosmos. See, he could have been Carl Sagan, uh, you know, or done uh, maybe like a Star Trek kind of a thing. Um, but Outback, Outback is interesting because it's uh, I, this idea of wilderness, right? And I think when we think of, you know, we think of the trees and how lovely the trees are, or think about the animals, the nice, cute, cuddly woodland creatures, uh, the river, you know, I mean, man, we love water around here, lakes and rivers of all kinds. But what the Outback reminds us, whether it's in Australia or the wilderness uh, of the deserts or of you know, the Rocky Mountains, or, you know, you head off into some of the swamps and bogs around here. What the idea of Outback reminds you is that this world can be a very dangerous place, right? That not all of this world is built for our comfort. Um, you know, if you're, if you're in the desert, uh, the, the kind of the wilderness, you know, that Jesus maybe would have had more of. Um, if you're thinking about the African savanna, right, as the VBS kids, we just had our VBS. I even have a little bit of VBS flu, uh, I think, uh, building up in me um, from our VBS this last week. You know, there's certainly lots of lions and tigers, uh, maybe not tigers in Africa, but lions and, you know, rhinoceroses and all kinds of things that look very nice at the zoo, but you wouldn't want to have to worry about fighting for your water for them. Um, and even around here, too, right? If, if we took away all of our creature comforts and you sat us out in the middle of some tamarack bog, it would be about five minutes before we wished we had bug spray or we had some sort of mosquito netting, right? The, all of these wonderful things that we've built up over centuries and millennia here as human beings that keep us safe, that keep us comfortable, you strip that away and pretty quickly we remember that this world is not entirely working on our behalf. It's working for its own behalf. It's working for its own reasons. And I think that is so much of what, what my Sunday, or not really my Sunday, but the, but the, the text that, that, that we have this morning, um, these Bible passages remind us that, that there's a whole, a whole rest of God's wonderful creation that is wonderful, that is good, that is something that God loves and cares about, but is often very dangerous for us. 
You know, we love this idea, you know, from the very beginning of the Bible in Genesis, right, when God sits down Adam and Eve and says, listen, this is a world that is for your dominion, that, you know, that you were to go out and find food and you're to be fruitful and to multiply and you are to be stewards over the earth to care for all of these creatures. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we are the stars of the show in each and every stage on the earth, that there are lots of places that is just profoundly difficult for us to be. I mean, Jesus goes off in the wilderness to test himself against Satan. Certainly that's part of of what this story is, both in Mark and in a couple of the other Gospels. Um, But it's also... He's, he's testing himself against the elements, against the wilderness itself. You know, that Jesus goes out there and he needs the angels to watch out for him, right? And if even Jesus needs angels to make sure that he has enough food and enough water, what does that say about the rest of us? You know, if we go out into the wilderness, we need to be prepared. Or maybe we just have to accept the fact that this world is a wild kind of place. You know, there are other passages in the Bible, in the Psalms, and in Job, and in other passages where God very clearly delights in all the wild and dangerous creatures of the world, the lions, and the, and the great sea monsters of the deep. God loves this, and God looks out for these, these creatures as well, not just us, not just those of us who feel very proud in our humanness and, and how powerful we are. I mean, lions and bears are powerful, but I mean, they don't have guns. They don't have, you know, tanks and uh, all kinds of horrible things that we've designed to kill one another. Um, uh, they don't have that. And yet, you know, put, our, put us alone in a room with a bear and we might be in trouble, you know. Um, our status in the world is, can, can feel very fragile and precarious. And of course, Australia actually is a great example of this. I, I, in in, in pre- preparation for this sermon today, I consulted an expert of sorts uh, in Australia, my brother. Not because my brother is a biologist or that he spent time in Australia, but my brother, like many members of my family, uh, likes to collect weird and interesting and, and usually useless information. Um, and so my brother, that I knew from previous experience, uh, knew of all kinds of dangerous creatures that, lives, that live in Australia. And so here's a few of the ones that he, uh, that he gave for me as an example. There is something called the funnel web spider, um, whose venom contains a neurotoxin in Australia. Uh, there are, of course, jellyfish. There's the big box jellyfish that, uh, that is common to different parts of the world, and, you know, big, like six-foot tentacles um, that can, you know, come upon you when you're swimming. But not only that, uh, Australia also makes their jellyfish in the micro variety as well. There's one of the most poisonous jellyfish in the entire world are found in Australia. It's called the Irukandji jellyfish, which not only is one of the most venomous uh, jellyfish in the world, it's also literally about a centimeter in size. So imagine trying to see that while you're swimming. This poisonous, pain-inducing, vomit-inducing jellyfish. You go swimming in Australia and, you know, uh, it ends a little poorly. So don't feel so bad, you know, about our lakes around here, I guess. Um, there, <laughs> there are spiders. Of, oh, I said the spider, right? There are snakes. Lots of different poisonous snakes in Australia. There's the coastal taipan. There's the eastern brown snake. And there's something called the common death adder. Now, you know things are dangerous in Australia when they call it the common death adder, as if this is just a regular part of your life. Be prepared, Australians. They're just a common death adder. I mean, if I would have named it, I would, I would hope it would be called like the extraordinarily rare death adder or something like that. But no, it's the common death adder. Um, and then if the natural creatures of Australia are not frightening enough, uh, there is a phenomenon that has happened in Australian history called a fire tornado. Right? Like, as if tornadoes aren't bad enough by themselves, Australia is like, let's crank it up a notch and let's add fire to the mix. Back in 2003, there was a fire tornado um, that had speeds of up to 160 miles an hour and, and, like, just incinerated 300 acres in less than a second. You know, this world, this universe, we do say that it is a good creation. God looked down on all of this and said it's good. Even Australia, God looked on it and said, this is good. And so that's a very humbling thing to remember, that all this world and all of its wildness and all of its dangerousness is a gift from God, is a wonderful thing that we are meant to care for. 
You know, there are a lot of things in our world, a lot of natural phenomenon, a lot of diseases, a lot of, uh, you know, parasites and, and viruses and bacteria that we look at and we think, how is this good? How does this fit in part of God's good creation? And maybe some of them we just have to wonder. It's just, it's just a mystery that we won't ever have the, the real answer to in this lifetime. We hope that it all works together for good, that everything in this creation was designed in a way, in the best way that God could make it. And there will be times, and we will wonder about that, you know, because we know that disasters do happen. But we also trust that we do have a God that cares for us, that hears us when we are suffering, that hears us when we are crying and groaning, and that also hears all the animals and all these creatures, dangerous and not. And God hears that suffering as well and cares for it too. God knit this world together in all of its physics and biology and, and, and wind and weather patterns in ways that may not always work in our favor. And that seems to be part of God's plan. That we have an important role as human beings, but we are not the only thing that God cares for. That we are not the primary thing that God cares for. Uh, that, that God loves all, not only all kinds of people, but all kinds of life in this world and in this universe, likely beyond. And so when we do suffer, God does send help. You know, whether it's Australia or, or, or Malmo or Deerwood or wherever, God will send ways to help us. And maybe part of the help that we can provide to our world sometimes is just to let the wild places be wild, right? If there are all kinds of jellyfish or all kinds of dingoes and crocodiles and other things in Australia that make life really difficult, maybe just let them be difficult in their little corner of the world and we can have our little homes where they are and we don't necessarily need to invade every single space on the planet. Certainly we are pretty tough as human beings. We do find a way to live in all kinds of places, whether it's Australia or, you know, the Inuit people far up in the, in the northern ice flows of our continent. Uh, people who live, you know, around here and, and manage to get enough bug spray going to, to make it a livable place to be and air conditioning in the summer when it's, when it's really nasty. But sometimes we also have to make room for the wildness of creation. It may not always work on our behalf or seemingly work on our behalf, but we trust that God is working goodness in our world. So have fun this summer. Enjoy creation. Uh, enjoy th this wonderful world that God has provided. Enjoy the wildness of the world a little bit, but be careful, right? Uh, God may, you know, sometimes God is caring for us, and sometimes God is caring that the bear has a nice tasty meal. So uh, um, just be a little careful out there. This is a wonderful world, but God's looking out for all kinds of creatures. Just, you never know where you're going to be on the food chain. So, um, so really, you know, God bless this, this wonderful world and all the life that lives in it. The birds of the air and the beasts of the sea, the creeping and crawling and biting and venomous things of the world. Thanks be to God for them too. Amen. And good